Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make calcium peroxide. For this we are going to use 1 liter of 11.9% hydrogen peroxide, which is a huge overkill, 80 grams of sodium hydroxide, 222 grams of 95% anhydrous calcium chloride and of course distilled water. For our own safety we are going to put on safety goggles and gloves. We began by weighing out anhydrous calcium chloride and afterwards measured out about 750 milliliters of 11.9% hydrogen peroxide. The rest of it was added later on. Keep in mind, I cooled the hydrogen peroxide down using a fridge. Afterwards, the anhydrous calcium chloride was added and we occasionally controlled the temperature by touching the glass. This way we can avoid too much decomposition and if it gets too hot, you can simply put it into a water bath. I also put the sodium hydroxide solution into water bath because it's extremely hot and we don't want to decompose too much hydrogen peroxide. The sodium hydroxide solution was added really slowly to the calcium chloride and hydrogen peroxide solution. What you see here is calcium hydroxide which immediately reacts with the hydrogen peroxide to form calcium peroxide. Here's the reaction. Calcium chloride reacts with sodium hydroxide to form calcium hydroxide and sodium chloride. It would be possible to use calcium hydroxide directly, but by generating it in the beaker, you get extremely fine calcium hydroxide, which reacts with the hydrogen peroxide even better, because it has a high surface area. To keep the solution from overheating, it was occasionally cooled back down using a cold water bath. By now I haven't talked about the first step, the calcium hydroxide reacts with the hydrogen peroxide to form extremely insoluble calcium peroxide and water. To increase the purity of the product even further and because a lot of hydrogen peroxide has already decomposed, we added 250 milliliters of additional 11.9% hydrogen peroxide. Fortunately I now have big vacuum filtration set up so we don't have to work with the 250 milliliter one. All of the stuff was put into this huge filtration funnel and we vacuum filtered. A lot of calcium peroxide is really fine and made it through the filter. I'm doing this as a proof of concept anyways and as long as we get little product I'll be happy. It took about an hour to filter most of the solution. As you can see the liquid still looks like milk which means that the yields will be really low. If you listen closely you were able to hear that I didn't filter all of the solution. Well why didn't I filter all of it? Is it because it took so long? No. Actually I would have filtered all of it but the oil filter of my vacuum pump decided to explode while I was doing the filtration and I first need to repair it. All of this calcium peroxide is going to go to waste and here's the broken oil filter. I also used the opportunity to change out the oil because it looked bad. The product was dried on a hot plate at 170 degrees celsius until it was completely dry. Once it was nearly dry the hot plate was turned off. I didn't want to decompose the product and I'm going to except that there's still a bit of moisture in there. We ended up with 15 grams of product and I didn't even calculate the yields because it's low, probably lower than 20%. It's time to test if we actually made calcium peroxide and not just calcium hydroxide. At high temperatures calcium peroxide breaks down into calcium oxide and elemental oxygen. A test tube containing a small amount of calcium peroxide was held into the flame of a Bunsen burner. After only a little bit of time, the balloon started to inflate. To test for the presence of oxygen, a piece of wood was set on fire and you can see that it's only glowing now. The calcium peroxide was heated a little more and, well, if you hold the splinter into the tube, you will be able to see that oxygen has been generated. The flame became brighter, indicating that the experiment worked out. If you liked today's video make sure to drop me a like, if you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that make sure to subscribe and I always have to thank my Patreons, you guys make it possible to film even more expensive projects. If you would like to become a Patreon too, check the link in the description. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time.